Hi, this is Maria from Email Gifts, partnering with Longwood Public Library to bring you a quick tutorial on how to make your own face mask at home. With this tutorial, you will be able to make your own unique and reusable mask to keep yourself and your loved ones safe. Please like and share this video if you found it useful and don't forget to follow Longwood Public Library on social media and of course, visit their website for more programs and activities like this one. list for today. So let's have some fun and get started. Okay, today we are using just plain cotton fabric. I have pre-washed and dried this to prep the fabric. Um, you can use a fat quarter, you can use um, scraps, whatever you really have on hand. Um, now we are also using um, quarter inch elastic. scissors and a rotary cutter, a tape measure or a ruler, straight pins and a um, seam ripper for just in case. Now today I am using uh, my digital machine, it's my Janome. And um, you do not need to have a digital machine to complete this project. This is my Janome Skyline S6. Now, as I mentioned, um, this particular machine is a digital machine, but you can use any mechanical machine that you feel comfortable with, um, whether it's a brother or a singer or any other brand. Okay, now, as I did mention, I did pre-wash and dry my fabric to prep it. Um, this is usually recommended with brand new fabric. And um, I also did pre-cut the fabric prior to making this video. Um, so the key takeaway here is that you're gonna prep your fabric by washing and drying, and then we're gonna go ahead and cut your fabric for um, the project, and we're gonna cut it in nine by six rectangles. Okay, so as I'm gonna show you right here, um, we have nine inches in length. And six inches in width. Now you can use scissors or you can use your rotary cutter to go ahead and cut your fabric. Um, either way, you just need two identical triangles, nine by six inches. Okay, aside from our fabric, we are gonna need our elastic. Um, we are using a quarter inch elastic and I did pre-cut them as well. So I cut them into seven inch strips. And of course, this could be shortened or elongated depending on what your need is. Um, you know, if you have a more narrow face or a wider face, just, you know, you can cut it whichever way. Now, we are gonna start pinning. Um, we're gonna do right sides together. Um, this particular fabric has a right side, which is the bright one, and a dull side, which is the wrong side. Um, with the solid fabric, there's no right or wrong side, um, so you could just leave that be but we're gonna put our right side down and we're gonna have our wrong side facing upwards. Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and pin and I do like to pin in the middle just so it helps with um, any shifting in my fabric. Okay, and once I have those two pins in place, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, my elastic from corner to corner. Um, so we're gonna pin from one corner to the other on the short side of our fabric. And what I like to do is I like to sandwich my um, elastic between the two pieces of fabric. So that just basically means that we're gonna stick that elastic in the middle of those two pieces of fabric and pin it in place. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other corner and um, of course the other two corners that we have left. Now one thing to keep in mind um, is that the pin is not a foolproof um, system to keep your fabric from shifting, but it does help. So if you do have the need to correct yourself as you're sewing, go ahead and you know make that adjustment as you go along. All right, here we go on the next side. I'm gonna go ahead and 
pin. We sandwiched our elastic between the two pieces of fabric. And we're gonna do the same thing on our last corner. Okay, so everything's nice and neatly lined up and I'm gonna turn my fabric over just to show you the other side. Um, since this fabric is a little bit sheer, you can tell how um, it's been pinned in place and um, how it should look like to you. Okay, so now we're ready to sew, um, but before we sew, we're gonna leave a little gap. Um, this gap is gonna be about three fingers wide or two inches, and you're gonna go ahead and leave that gap so we could turn our project inside out later. So we're gonna go ahead and sew the four sides, leaving that gap. So for today we are using a quarter inch um, seam allowance and um, I do like to start sewing from the middle of one of the longer sides of the fabric um, just because it's a good placeholder for me to know where to leave the gap to turn the project over um, later on. And um, we are going to turn our fabric so that just means that you're going to lift your presser foot and um, go ahead and turn the fabric. Um, towards the next side where you're gonna be sewing. And that just makes it simple so you don't have to go ahead and cut each time you get to a corner. You can just simply and seamlessly um, turn your fabric and you know everything will be in place. Now, um, as I mentioned before, um, the pins aren't foolproof. So as you can see here, I am adjusting um, as I go and I'm aligning or realigning rather my elastic and my fabric. So everything is the way I want it and it's neatly in place. And then once again, I'm turning my fabric by lifting that presser foot and then turning the project towards the way um, that I'm gonna sew next. Here, once again, I'm taking my pin out and I'm just organizing and really just modifying my, um, my elastic and my fabric there to make sure that it's the way I want it and it's as neat as possible. As I mentioned, everything's gonna be about a quarter inch seam allowance throughout. Um, you can use your stitch plate to help you with that measurement. Um, you know, a lot of stitch plates come with a um, measurement or come with lines that will help you in um, lining up that quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once again, just fixing up my project as I go. And this is the last side I'm sewing. So I did stop right now just because um, I saw that this is where I'm gonna go ahead and leave my gap to be able to turn my project over. So here you have it, everything's sewn. I'm checking over to see that everything was um, sewn in place, that all of my layers are sewn together, um, and that everything is the way I want it. Okay, I can take the pins out. I can go ahead and take that little gap and start turning my project right side out. And to help you with this, you can use the, um, the end of a pencil, um, the back end rather of the pencil or a pen. Uh, nothing sharp, just something to help you push those corners along. They can get stuck and they can't be a little pesky, but luckily today I am having good luck with that and um, 
I have no need for it. Now right now I'm gonna go ahead and turn those raw edges inward and I'm just finger pressing them um, and make sure that my project is nice and smooth. Now at this point you can also use an iron to press your project, um, but it's not completely necessary. You can do it with your hands. Now for the plates, um, I chose a point in the middle of the way of my project and I folded um, away from me about a quarter inch and that forms my first pleat. And I'm gonna go um, and do the same thing for the top. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and choose somewhere in the middle of the project to um, fold that pleat which is just folding the fabric away from you about a quarter inch. So um, the reason why I say um, about, you know, halfway through your project is because you want those pleats to be placed um, in the middle of your mask. So not too high, not too low, um, depending on how you've sewn your mask and um, the measurements that you used, um, you know, that will change where your pleats land. But um, this is really how it looks. Okay, that's the side of you. All right, and now we're ready to sew all our sides and just making sure that we sew our, um, you know, gap closed. All righty, so now we're ready to finish our project. Once again, we're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance and we're gonna turn our project as we get to um, the edges. So um, yeah, let's go ahead. Now the really wonderful thing about this project that I really do love is that um, it is a project that you can make for your loved ones, for um, you know, your family, your friends, to really just show a token of how much you care about them and their health. Um, so this is just a great project um, for that. And also just, you know, have fun with it. Um, you can change the fabric to be, um, you know, as fun as you want it, as serious as you want it for the office or for, you know, just plain old target shopping. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this particular um, pattern that I used um, is nice because I can reverse it to the solid side or I can make it, you know, fun and, and flirty with those um, nice florals. So just have fun with it. You can even change the fabric to whatever the season is. So maybe you might want to think about a holiday mask. That sounds like fun. All right, so we're getting close to finishing our project. Um, this is the last side that we're gonna be stitching. And the one thing that I do recommend once you get to the end um, is to backstitch a couple of stitches um, just to secure those um, last few stitches in place and make sure it doesn't unravel on you by accident. And now we're just gonna go ahead and cut our tail ends and make sure that we don't have any frays or anything like that. And here we are. You can take those pins out. And your project is done. All right, beautiful. Okay, that's what the pleats are gonna look like from the front, from the back. Okay, once again from the front and then from the side. And now you are ready to wear your mask. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. This was a very fun project to put together for you. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, like I said, like and share this video if you find it useful, if you think others will get some joy out of it. Um, I really, really hope that you enjoyed it. And of course, follow Longwood Public Library um, social media, um, visit their website for more projects and more tutorials. And of course, you can follow me on social media as well. Um, thank you so much for having me and for watching this video. Um, hope to see you soon. Have a good one. Bye-bye.